Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 1 Retrospective Review, where I take a look back at older episodes that I never did a review for and give my thoughts in hindsight. And after what was a pretty lackluster start to Season 1, I mean, really was feeling like a massive slog, the last six or so episodes we've done here have been really fun, really interesting, they really draw you in. And so today, when we take a look at the mime, let's hope we can keep up that same energy, right? Okay, so yeah, nothing else for it, let's get going. So we start off the episode following Ladybug as she returns to her house following a mission, with Tiki telling her as they detransform that what she did for Alia today was pretty cool. And of course what she did was stopping particularly for her to give her a little bit of a sound bite instead of all the other gathered journalists, speaking to her directly, getting her good content for her blog, and making her feel seen by her hero. And yeah, that is really nice, honestly. And then Alia arrives, and I gotta say, how? Ladybug's been back home for, what, 20 seconds? It looked like she was a pretty long way away from home in that video. Pretty sure it was at the Louvre. Does Alia have super speed or something? Like, the way Tiki speaks to Marinette suggests they have not spoken about it yet. So they haven't detransformed and then retransformed. So is Alia secretly the Flash or something? How's she keeping pace with Ladybug who can swing over buildings super fast? <laughs> I never noticed that before, it's so odd. Anyway, Alia's super pumped up that she got the footage and shows Marinette. And then she goes downstairs to get her laptop, leaving her phone with famously clumsy Marinette on a balcony. That was her first mistake. Disengage, repeat, disengage! But even Alia shouldn't have been able to predict that Marinette would be so stupid as to lean over the railing with the phone. Like, what is she thinking with this? Absolutely one of the most boneheaded things she's done in season one. Like, Jesus! What was she thinking? And then somehow she accidentally deletes the footage. Oh, it's priceless footage too. And just deleted. Hopefully it was in the cloud and she can get it back. Because otherwise, whew, just, whew. In hindsight, you'd want Alia to be live streaming onto her blog. Then it would have been safe from Marinette's stupidity. Also, I feel like Tiki should know better too. You know Marinette's a clumsy fool. Don't tempt fate. Wait until you upload onto the lady blog. Especially since Alia is right downstairs and could appear again with her laptop at any moment. Just wait until you're alone, then watch it. Also, Tiki's just not helpful in this situation. Oh, at least she didn't drop the phone. <laughs> she doesn't even seem to care. And you know what? Fair enough. After millions of years, I very much doubt she cares about this sort of thing very much at all. What are you? An idiot sandwich. But regardless, it does make me laugh. And then we get another instance where they switch up the animation style very briefly to simulate a daydream. And that was fun. Like I said last time they did it, I miss them doing this a lot. And I just gotta say, this season has picked up so much. This is peak. No wonder it got so popular. How do you go from this to the dark ages of the show? Oh. Anyway, she gets called downstairs and delays the reveal as Milen, her dad, and Marinette's mum are now there talking about Fred's upcoming performance in a play called The Mime's Extraordinary Adventures. Also, this dude is tall. Like, mega tall. Pretty much all of them only coming up to his hips. Or his stomach at best. What a unit. Also, a bit cringe trying to get these three people to clap for your dad despite not even having seen the performance yet. I'd be embarrassed if I was him. Everybody! And then he picks up the hat that he had Marinette fix up for him, and oh, he does a cringy mime to go along with it. <sighs> Guess cringe runs in this family, I suppose. Thankfully, Marinette played along with it, but I think I would have felt too awkward if it was me. I would have just smiled and waved, boys. Just smile and wave. And so, off he goes to prepare for the premiere, but not before he gets a call from the director expecting him to make it to the two of us. But I gotta ask why? They all live in Paris, don't they? They all seem to be doing the show at the Eiffel Tower, so shouldn't they just be able to meet up there? Why do they even need to do this part? Why wouldn't he just go to the theatre wherever they're holding it? Ugh. Also, his understudy is such an obvious snake in the grass, like what a dweeb. Imagine trying to pull some Game of Thrones style politics for what I assume is an amateur theatre production. And I'm assuming it's not a professional production, because what kind of professional production would have the lead actor have to go and get his own hat fixed? I presume for free, by a school friend of his daughter, working on exposure I'm guessing. Also we see later on in the show that he still works as a teacher or whatever he does. So I don't think this was his breakout role. Later, Alia, Marinette and Milen are all hanging out, having tea or whatever. And Alia tries to show Milen the clip on her phone, which in turn gives Marinette the bright idea to send them packing by manipulating her friend Milen into not wanting to be late to her dad's performance and then just straight up stealing the phone from Alia's bag. Like, uh, what's the end game here? Is she going to toss it in the river and just pray she never asks about it? Is she supposed to hope that she thinks that somebody stole it when they were walking or something? Loose morals here, Marinette. Loose morals. And also the understudy, because at the same time, he sends out a false meeting location change so that Fred's going to miss the show. 
but back to Marinette. They get a call from Milen, which sets up a time for Marinette to hand over the phone, but not before she decides she's going to try to recreate the footage, which seems a bit ridiculous, and like it has no chance of actually working, but hey, Marinette is pretty stupid when she's under pressure sometimes. Meanwhile, the bus leaves for the Eiffel Tower, and Fred gets fired over the phone because it means they might miss dress rehearsals, and he's at the Louvre. But the bus isn't at the Louvre, and they need to get to the Eiffel Tower. Um, is there any reason why he can't get a cab or something over there? Because I googled it, it says like, it's eight minutes to drive there. So, yeah, anyway, he gets fired. And honestly, I'm on team mime here. Gabe is the hero of this story. Give Fred the power to beat down on the treacherous understudy. Punish them all. That's what we want to see. Screw that guy. Gabe's giving him a way to make it feel square. I can respect that. Man, it's very rare for Gabe to feel like he's done the right thing. But here we are. And meanwhile, Marinette tries to randomly record a new version of the video she deleted, but she fails hard because one, the context is completely different. There's no journalists. Molly's not talking. Nothing. But then also a random cat knocks the phone into a garbage bin. Oh, bad luck to you, Alia. Those public bins are nasty. And then the mime appears and wreaks havoc, destroying all the ads for the mime show. Man. And I gotta say, all those advertisements on a place like the Louvre, this wouldn't have been cheap. What's the budget for this amateur theatre production? If it is that big, if it is a professional thing, why does it feel like it's community theatre level? Ugh. And then he smacks the police cruiser away like a baseball, only for Ladybug to save Roger from certain death. Although, I'd argue that the rebound landing he does, that could have killed him anyway. The airbags would certainly deploy. Collarbone, snapped. Whiplash, concussion. But nah, not in miraculous land. He's perfectly fine. He's all good. Although I don't care how bouncy that yo-yo string's supposed to be, those lampposts would not be able to hold a car coming at them at that speed from the air. I mean, look how hot that thing's coming in. Look at this. No chance. Roger should be dead. And look how quick he got out too. Like, it lands and he's instantly on the ground. Did he even have his seatbelt on? What a clown. Anyway, Marinette and the mine battle. And whose car should drive past but poor little Mr. Daddy Issues himself, Adrian Agrest, who's on his way to the mime show with Natalie and Gorilla. But of course, they got attacked by Mime. Ladybug then arrives, Adrian runs off to transform, and now we've got Cat Noir too. And our duo have their first battle with the Mime, which is fun. I like the Mime. He makes you have to pay attention instead of just watching the action like a mindless mouth breather. You have to watch along like the heroes and try to figure out what the hell he's miming. This is peak OG Miraculous. Good times. And honestly, I just find Mime entertaining. Like the actual character, not Mime performances in real life. I kind of find those weird, but still. The villain is entertaining, he's funny. Locking out the heroes was an invisible gate. Escaping in a mimed car. It's just so goofy and stupid and fun. But yeah, they realise he can only mime one thing at a time. But only after he's escaped and started chasing the tour bus. So they do a pretty fun car chase sequence and eventually catch up to the bus. With the mime on a fake motorbike in hot pursuit. He then gets on top of the bus, they have a brief fight. They almost get to his hat, he falls and lands on another car, and in my highlight of the episode, he uses a chainsaw to climb inside and threatens the driver into speeding along in pursuit of the bus. Oh, this was crazy. It was so funny. They battle some more. He shoots out the tires of the bus, and once again, we get the speeding bus. It's going widely out of control, and it's somehow being stopped with no injuries or property damage by Cat Noir's staff wedged between some lampposts. Interesting. And once again, those lampposts will not hold up against the force of a speeding bus. I'm sorry. Anyway, they battle, and then once again, they end it in the cheapest way possible, because that is a trend. Despite how fun these episodes are, the defeat of the villains is always so anticlimactic. They somehow get him to topple the Eiffel Tower down on top of himself, and then they steal his hat while he holds it up, with them then reversing everything, yada yada. You know the drill. And then director and the understudy apologize and he forgives them. Although I reckon the understudy should have just been fired, right? Like straight up fired and blacklisted. This is literally all his fault. And then they go to the performance. Marinette confesses to Alia, who tells her it's all G because she'd already uploaded it. Lol. And then Marinette reveals that she'd already arranged an exclusive interview with Ladybug. wonder how that explained this as they never mentioned in the show as to how... Marinette would set this up, but sure. And anyway, this is going to bring a lot of viewers to the Lady Blog. Good on them. And so yeah, this is where it ends. Another really good episode. I feel like the season is peaking, and it's peaking hard. You love to see it. And so with all that being said, that's the end of the review. These have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? You agree with what I think? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.